So here's the question. Has science discovered God? Well, Einstein didn't believe it was possible, but Stephen Hawking said it might be the greatest scientific discovery of all time. So, what discovery has baffled the greatest scientific minds of the past century, and why has it caused them to rethink the origin of our universe? Well, new and more powerful telescopes have unlocked mysteries about our universe never before revealed, giving us amazing new scientific insight into the origin of life. Has science discovered God? <laughs> But wait a minute, hasn't science proven we don't need God to explain the universe? What is it about this discovery that is so fundamentally different, and why has it stunned the scientific world? Well, this discovery, along with what molecular biologists have learned about the sophisticated coding within DNA, have many scientists now admitting that the universe and life itself appear to be part of a grand design. One cosmologist put it this way: Many scientists, when they admit their views, Inclined toward the design argument, surprisingly, many scientists who are now talking about God have no religious belief whatsoever. So, what are these stunning discoveries that have scientists suddenly speaking of God? Well, there are three revolutionary discoveries from the fields of astronomy and molecular biology that really stand out. One, the universe had a beginning. Two. The universe is just right for life. And three, DNA coding reveals intelligence. The statements leading scientists have made about these discoveries may shock you. Let's take a look. The universe had a one-time beginning. Since the dawn of civilization, man has gazed in awe at the stars, wondering what they are and how they got there. Although on a clear night, the unaided human eye can see only about 6,000 stars, Hubble and other powerful telescopes reveal there are a billion trillion stars clustered in over 100 billion galaxies. In fact, our sun is like one grain of sand amidst the world's beaches. But prior to the 20th century, the majority of scientists believed our own Milky Way galaxy was the entire universe, and that only about 100 million stars existed. Most scientists of the past believed that our universe never had a beginning. They believed that mass, space, and energy that compose our entire universe had always existed. But in the early 20th century, astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe is expanding. Rewinding the process mathematically, he calculated that everything in the universe, including matter, energy, space, and even time itself, actually had a beginning. Well, shockwaves hit the scientific community. Many scientists, including Einstein, reacted negatively. In what Einstein later called the biggest blunder of my life, he fudged the equations to avoid the implication that the universe had a beginning. Well, perhaps the most vocal adversary of the idea that the universe had a beginning was British astronomer Sir Frederick Hoyle, who sarcastically nicknamed the creation event a Big Bang. He stubbornly held to his steady-state theory that the universe had always existed. Well, so did Einstein and other scientists until the evidence for a beginning became overwhelming. The logical conclusion was like the proverbial elephant in the room, namely that something or someone beyond scientific investigation must have started it all. Then, finally, in 1992, the COBE satellite experiments proved that the universe really did have a one-time beginning in an incredible flash of light and energy. Although some scientists called it the moment of creation, most preferred referring to it as the Big Bang. Astronomer Robert Jastrow tries to help us imagine how it all began. The picture suggests the explosion of a cosmic hydrogen bomb. The instant in which the cosmic bomb exploded marked the birth of the universe. So the conclusion is. Everything in the universe came from nothing. 
Science is unable to tell us what or who caused the universe to begin, but some believe it clearly points to a creator. Well, British theorist Edward Milne wrote a mathematical treatise on relativity which concluded by saying, as to the first cause of the universe in the context of expansion, that is left to the reader to insert, but our picture is incomplete without him. Another British scientist, Edmund Whitaker, attributed the beginning of our universe to divine will constituting nature from nothingness. Many scientists were struck by the parallel of a one-time creation event from nothing with the biblical creation account in Genesis 1.1. Prior to this discovery, many scientists regard the biblical account of creation from nothing as unscientific. Although he called himself an agnostic, Robert Jastrow was compelled by the evidence to admit now we see how the astronomical evidence leads to a biblical view of the origin of the world. Another similar statement came from agnostic George Smoot, the Nobel Prize winning scientist in charge of the Kobe experiment. He put it like this, there is no doubt that a parallel exists between the Big Bang as an event and the Christian notion of creation from nothing. Scientists who used to scoff at the Bible's account of creation are now admitting that the biblical concept of creation from nothing has been right all along. Well, cosmologists who specialize in the study of the universe and its origins soon realized that a chance cosmic explosion could never bring about life any more than a nuclear bomb would unless it was precisely engineered to do so. And that meant a designer must have planned it. They began using words like super intellect, creator, and even supreme being to describe this designer. Why is this? Because the universe is finely tuned for life. Physicists calculated that for life to exist, gravity and the other laws of physics that govern our universe needed to be intricately tuned just right, or our universe couldn't exist. For instance, did you know that if the expansion rate of the universe had been slightly weaker, gravity would have pulled all matter back into a big crunch? We're not talking about merely a 1 or 2 percent reduction in the universe's expansion rate. Well, Stephen Hawking writes, if the rate of expansion one second after the Big Bang had been smaller by even one part in a hundred thousand million million, the universe would have re-collapsed before it ever reached its present size. Well, on the flip side, if the expansion rate had been a mere fraction greater than it was, well, all galaxies, stars, and planets could never have formed, and we wouldn't be here. And for life to exist, the conditions in our solar system and our own planet also need to be just right. For example, we all realize that without an atmosphere of oxygen, none of us would be able to breathe. And without oxygen, water couldn't exist. Without water, there would be no rainfall for our crops. Other elements such as hydrogen, nitrogen, sodium, carbon, calcium, and phosphorus are also essential for life. But that alone is not all it's needed for life to exist. The size, temperature, relative proximity, and chemical makeup of our planet, sun, and moon also need to be just right. And there are dozens of other conditions that needed to be exquisitely fine-tuned or we wouldn't be here to think about it. The scientists who believe in God may have expected such fine-tuning, but atheists and agnostics were unable to explain the remarkable quote-unquote coincidences. Theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking, an agnostic, writes, the remarkable fact is that the values of these numbers seem to have been very finely adjusted to make possible the development of life. It all brings us to one question. The universe, accident or miracle? But couldn't this fine-tuning be attributed to chance? 
After all, odds makers know that even long shots can eventually win at the racetrack. And against heavy odds, lotteries are eventually won by someone. So, what are the odds against human life existing by chance from a random explosion in cosmic history? Well, for human life to be possible from a Big Bang utterly defies the laws of probability. One astronomer calculates the odds at less than one chance in a trillion, 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 trillion. In other words, it would be far easier for a, a blindfolded person in one try to discover one specially marked grain of sand out of all the beaches of the world. Look at it this way. The odds of one random Big Bang producing life as we know it would be like one person winning over a thousand consecutive mega million dollar lotteries after purchasing only a single ticket for each. Not very likely. Really quite impossible, unless it was fixed by someone behind the scenes, which is what everyone would think. And that is what many scientists are concluding. Someone behind the scenes designed and created the universe. Well, this new understanding of how miraculous human life is in our universe led the agnostic astronomer George Greenstein to ask, is it possible that suddenly, without intending to, we've stumbled upon the scientific proof of the existence of a supreme being? However, as an agnostic, Greenstein maintains his faith in science rather than a creator to ultimately explain our origins. Robert Jastrow explains why some scientists are reluctant to accept a transcendent creator. Uh, he says, there is a kind of religion in science it is the religion of a person who believes there is order and harmony in the universe. This religious faith of the scientists is violated by the discovery that the world had a beginning under conditions in which the known laws of physics are not valid, and as a product of forces or circumstances we cannot discover. When that happens, the scientist has lost control. If you really examine the implications, he would be traumatized. Well, it's understandable why scientists like Greenstein and Hawking seek other explanations rather than attribute our finely tuned universe to a creator. Hawking speculates that other unseen and unprovable universes may exist, increasing the odds that one of them, like ours, is perfectly fine-tuned for life. However, since his proposal is speculative and outside of verification, it can hardly be called scientific. Although he's also an agnostic British astrophysicist, Paul Davies dismisses Hawking's idea as too speculative. He writes, such a belief must rest on faith rather than observation. Although Hawking continues leading the charge to explore purely scientific explanations for our origins, other scientists, including many agnostics, have acknowledged what appears to be overwhelming evidence for a creator. Astronomer Frederick Hoyle wrote, A common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics as well as chemistry and biology, and that there are no blind forces worth speaking about in nature. Although Einstein wasn't religious and didn't believe in a personal god, he called the genius behind the universe an intelligence of such superiority that compared with it, all the systematic thinking and acting of human beings is an utterly insignificant reflection. Atheist Christopher Hitchens, who spent much of his life writing and debating against the existence of God, was most perplexed by the fact that life couldn't exist if things were different by just one degree or one hair. Davies acknowledges, there is for me powerful evidence that there is something going on behind it all. It seems as though somebody has fine-tuned nature's numbers to make the universe. The impression of design is overwhelming. But astronomy is not the only area where science has discovered evidence for design. There is another discovery, 
DNA, the language of life. As recent as 1953, molecular biologists discovered intricately complex design in the microscopic world of DNA. This tiny molecule has been called the brains behind each cell in our body, as well as every other living thing. Yet the more they discover about DNA, the more amazed they are at the brilliance behind it. Scientists who believe the material world is all that exists, like Richard Dawkins, argue DNA evolved by natural selection without a creator. Yet even most ardent evolutionists admit that the origin of DNA's intricate complexity is unexplainable. DNA's intricate complexity caused its co-discoverer, Francis Crick, to believe that it could never have originated on Earth naturally. Crick, an evolutionist, believed life is too complex to have originated on Earth and must have come from outer space. He wrote, An honest man, armed with all the knowledge available to us now, could only state that, in some sense, the origin of life appears at the moment to almost be a miracle. So many are the conditions which would have had to have been satisfied to get it going. The coding behind DNA reveals such intelligence that it staggers the imagination. A mere pinhead volume of DNA contains information equivalent to a stack of paperback books that would encircle the Earth 5,000 times. And DNA operates like a language with its own extremely complex software code. Microsoft founder Bill Gates says that the software of DNA is far, far more complex than any software we have ever developed. Richard Dawkins and other evolutionary biologists believe that all this complexity originated through natural selection. Yet, as Crick, a Nobel Prize winner, remarked, natural selection could never have produced the first molecule. Many scientists believe that the coding within the DNA molecule points to an intelligence far exceeding what could have occurred by natural causes. In the early 21st century, noted atheist Anthony Flew's lifelong unbelief came to an abrupt end when he studied the remarkable intelligence behind DNA. Flew explains what changed his position. What I think the DNA material has done is to show that intelligence must have been involved in getting these extraordinarily diverse elements together. The enormous complexity by which the results were achieved looked to me like the work of intelligence. It now seems to me that the finding of more than 50 years of DNA research have provided materials for a new and enormously powerful argument to design. Although Flew was not a Christian, he admitted that the software behind DNA is far too complex to have originated without a designer. All this scientific evidence leads us to honestly consider that life and the universe have the fingerprints of a creator. Are scientists now convinced that a creator has left his fingerprints on the universe? Although many scientists are still bent on squeezing God out of the universe, most recognize the religious implications of these new discoveries. In his book, The Grand Design, Stephen Hawking, who doesn't believe in a personal God, attempts to explain why the universe doesn't need God. Yet when faced with the evidence, even Hawking has also admitted there must be religious overtones but I think most scientists prefer to shy away from the religious side of it. As an agnostic, world-renowned astronomer Robert Jastrow had no Christian agenda behind his conclusions. However, he freely acknowledges the compelling case for a creator. He writes of the shock and despair experienced by scientists who thought they had squeezed God out of their world. These are his words. For the scientist who has lived by his faith in the power of reason, the story ends like a bad dream. 
He has scaled the mountains of ignorance. He's about to conquer the highest peak. And as he pulls himself over the final rock, he is greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. So what if, after all, there is a creator? If there is a superintelligent creator, the question arises, what is he like? Is he just some cosmic force like in Star Wars, or is he a personal being like us? Well, since we're personal and relational beings, wouldn't the one who created us also be personal and relational? Many scientists, like Arthur L. Shablov, professor of physics at Stanford University and winner of the Nobel Prize in Physics, believe that these new discoveries provide compelling evidence for a personal God. He writes, It seems to me that when confronted with the marvels of life in the universe, one must ask why and not just how. The only possible answers are religious. I find a need for God in the universe and in my own life. If God is personal, and since he has given us the ability to communicate, wouldn't we expect him to communicate with us and let us know why we are here? Well, as we've seen, science is unable to answer questions about God and the purpose for life. However, since the Bible was right about creation from nothing, might it also be trustworthy regarding God, life, and purpose? Two thousand years ago, a man set foot on our planet who claimed to have the answer to life. Although his time on earth was brief, his impact changed the world and is still felt today. His name is Jesus Christ. The eyewitnesses to Jesus Christ tell us that he continually demonstrated creative power over nature's laws. They tell us he was wise, humble, and compassionate. He, he healed the lame, deaf, and blind. He stopped raging storms instantly, it created food for Creation began, for it was through him that everything was made, whether spiritual or material, seen or un. And it was necessary for him to rise from the dead so that we too could have life after death. As the creator, Jesus certainly would have power over life and death. And those closest to him claim they saw him alive after he died and was buried for three days. If they were wrong, then Christianity has been founded upon a lie. But if they were right, such a miracle would substantiate all Jesus said about God, himself, and us. 
But must we take the resurrection of Jesus Christ by faith alone, or is there solid historical evidence? Several skeptics began investigations into the historical record to prove the resurrection account false. What did they discover? Let me invite you to click on the link below to take a closer look at the evidence for the most fantastic claim ever made, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. (music) 